Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today I want to talk about this. This is the Unify UTR, their new travel router, arriving with a couple of network ports there on the port, of course, one WAN, one LAN. It also arrives with USB-C power input there, as well as USB tethering. This is their new travel router solution. Now, those that have followed the channel for a while will know i got a real thing for travel routers. I've talked about them for a long time. For example, things like the GLI net we talked about before. A lot of work that I do involves me on the go a lot of the time. And when I do that, I need to connect to my own local network and I've got to be able to also work at the same time with existing Wi-Fi hotspots, corporate, non-corporate coffee shops like this one. Now, what this does allow me to do that right now very few other travel routers can do is allow me safe secure access to my unify network using something like unify's teleport program it allows me to bind this to an existing network now how would that be beneficial to me on the go now how one of the ways i'm going to be utilizing this new utr device is going to be when I'm on site like this, I'm going to turn up at an office space, for example here, I'm going to be trunking in cat cables along the wall, I'm going to be putting some cameras into different offices, sorting out the Wi-Fi connections between them, as well as setting up a server. Now, that's going to take two or three days, given the number of offices it's going to happen in. So, rather than trying to tap into the Wi-Fi in the building, which realistically I don't particularly trust, what it's going to allow me to do is immediately connect in connect the UTR and then I can set that up. So when I am accessing my own Unify network back in the studio, it's doing it via that teleport VPN. But the reason I'm gonna use it in these setups in particular is this is gonna allow me to not only set up on site an existing setup for myself. So for example, I would put in a gateway, I would put in a Wi-Fi connection, maybe a few cameras, but all of these devices have already been pre-configured to my Unify network, my own particular setup. This is gonna allow me, utilizing this device, to clone that network, ultimately, so I don't have to individually rack on, on board each of these devices, my phone, a tablet, another laptop, a colleague's laptop, or any of these devices I'm gonna temporarily deploy on this site, all of these will automatically connect because I've already cloned that existing network and it can still target where it's going because of teleport connecting to my original Unify network. Now, a number of you are going to be wondering, why would I use a travel router and not just use a mobile phone for tethering? We've actually got a video coming up on that soon about the real advantages of travel routers in their four separate forms. But ultimately, it means that when I am on the go, be it on a train, be it in a pub, be it in a coffee shop, I can still bind all of my devices together to a single Wi-Fi point under my control. I can then institute VPN clients or server-side VPN thanks to uh, teleport and accessing that remote network to ensure that any of that more vital, more mission critical, more confidential information is still locked in. Now, the convenience, of course, if I was with a group of friends and we were going traveling and it allows uh, and we all want to connect to the Wi-Fi, all I have to do is go into the Unify application, access this, connect to the existing Wi-Fi connection where I find myself, and then all those other users, all those other devices in my local circle are now only connecting with this, with a pre-established Wi-Fi connection. And again, because I've got the option to borrow an existing SSID from my existing network, it allows me to chop and change the devices I've got with me conveniently, securely, and easily. Now, this isn't the first mobile-adjacent device that Unify have launched. Recently, they launched a bunch of 5G SIM or LTE-enabled router devices. Now, in light of that, I will also highlight there are things about this that aren't going to be for everyone. The fact that it's not Wi-Fi 7, when there are Wi-Fi 7 travel routers in the market, albeit maybe twice or in some cases three times the price, is going to be bothersome for some users. Also, the network connections there, the physical WAN and the physical LAN, they are one gigabit networking each. So we're looking at something that's only taken advantage of 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz connectivity there. That said, this is clearly a device that is targeted towards existing Unify ecosystem adopters. Also, on top of that, 
at $79. Yes, you can get travel routers for less than that, but you generally find they're locked in with subscription services with um, SIM or eSIM related matters. And although I would have liked to have seen a SIM card ready version of this or even an eSIM version of this, let's see how exactly this flies off the shelves with Unify to, to see if they engage with that. Because again, they've got a lot of that portfolio, they've got a lot of that technology. And frankly, if Unify do release an eSIM travel router with an internal battery, sign me up. Once the device is set up, go ahead and just connect into it via the Wi-Fi AP that it's created. Then from there, using the app tab in, find the public Wi-Fi that you want to use, select the public Wi-Fi, connect with it, and if it does have a login screen, it will guide you towards it. And once that's done, you can then sign into that network and all the other devices that you've already created connections to either the UTR or connecting with the um, cloned Unify SSID that you've carried over will then connect with. And as you can see, now we're connected to that prep Wi-Fi and therefore all of my other devices can now tunnel in via the Unify travel router. And then from there, if I choose to at the bottom, go ahead and connect into my Unify network remotely on this public Wi-Fi, taking advantage of that teleport um, po po point to point VPN. Likewise, once you've established a connection with a different internet service, from there you can actually choose the level of connectivity and priority to both the Wi-Fi, the USB tethered connection, or the standard network connectivity there. You can even bind in an existing WAN, of course, into the WAN port located on the base of the system, and then from there introduce a wired WAN into this to be enjoyed by the connected surrounding devices. I also quite like the idea that the USB power and the USB tether have been separated because a lot of the time the device you might be introducing for power might be a multiple power bank you've located or just a USB port on like a bus or a train. So ensuring that you can still take advantage of a separate USB for tethering is pretty nice. And of course, as mentioned, you still have the option if you choose to, to not only network in physically to go for that one gigabit connection, it's a shame it's not 2.5, but at the same time, if you are somewhere that's got a wired connection, maybe you're hot desking, you can still pop that directly inside and still enable direct LAN integration into this. And then from there, all of the connected devices that are either using its own individual SSID or taking advantage of the SSID you've cloned via teleport from Unify Network is now ready to rock. Again, lovely stuff. Also, although I love the touch screen here that you've got, so you can sort of see the level of strength with the connection you're aping, as well as if you're teleporting in for an existing connection and cloning an SSID, unfortunately, this is not touch screen. You can't adapt it. You do need the mobile app in order to get things done and changed. Also, as mentioned, bear in mind, this does not have its own internal power supply. This does take advantage of a five watt USB connection there on the base. And on top of that, it's got a five gigahertz and 2.5 gigahertz connection via two times two to individual in antenna. I believe they're located there at the bottom. We'll be dismantling this for the fuller review next month. Also, it's worth remembering that this device here only takes advantage of Wi-Fi 5. That means you're only looking at connections at 20, 40, and 80 megahertz. That means the maximum performance on this is going to feel just a little lower than some of the alternatives in the market and some of the bigger, arguably slightly more expensive boys. So for example, you are looking at kind of a maximum cap of 866 megabits per second. So again, a little over 80 megabytes per second with um, a typical observed uplink, according to Unify, sitting at around 150 megabits. That's just 15 megabytes per second via that maximum 80 megahertz connection there. Taking advantage of the Ethernet LAN, you're obviously going to get a little bit more, the Ethernet WAN, I should say. But overall, I'd say performance-wise for a travel router, set your expectations to be fairly small. And of course, there are going to be those of you that look at a travel router like this and just go, well, why don't I just use my hotspot? And yes, you can still do that. But what you can also do is enable a hotspot on your phone and then from there, directly tether in to this device. And the result is that you will then be able to not only power this device, as you can see here from your mobile device, but then you can make your wireless hotspot here be not only accessible to everyone else, Remember, you can clone your existing SSID, so all of those devices that already have the SSID of your Wi-Fi connection back home with a Unify network can now connect to the exact same connection being cloned here. You don't have to individually set up the brand new 
SSID on those devices. You can just carry over the existing SSD profile onto this device. They're not reinventing the wheel here. Support of OpenVPN and WireGuard client is something we've seen before from other travel routers in the market right now. And this will be putting up, will be putting it in its paces against that of other travel routers in the coming weeks or so, especially next month when head over to Vegas for CES. But at least as it stands, this is an interesting entry into what I hope to be an expanding series from the brand. Apart from that, look forward to the full and more detailed performance review very, very soon. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.